Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming uh, to the March 2nd work session of the City Council for the City of Monroe. I let the record reflect that all members of the council are present in person, and I believe Mr. Garrett is online. Mr. Garrett, can you hear us? I can. Thank you. Uh, moving straight to the City Administrator Report, Mr. Probst. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple quick things to hit here. Um, we're trying to get together a traffic calming public meeting um, that'll be here in the council chambers towards the end of this month. Uh, still ironing out the dates with everybody's availability, um, but that'll be to kind of unveil some general concept plans with our engineers as to some of the higher profile areas that, that you all have uh, tasked us with to uh, see about uh, doing some more traffic calming devices. And we just want to make sure that there's plenty of public input on it. Uh, during the process. Um, additionally, as you know, you approved the paving for South Madison. That'll start in April. I know that's been a hot topic. You know, when is that going to get done? It is uh, going to be let in April. Um, and just a reminder, this was for a huge sanitary sewer upgrade. Um, you know, the pipes predate all of us by many years, 80 to 100 year old pipes there in many places. And Nobody's ever seen that level of destruction on South Madison. So we're all dealing with it here in 2021, but it, it'll be uh, soon finished out with that paving project. Um, we're inching closer to revealing the final engineered concept plan for the, the downtown green. We're excited about that. We've been working on it for quite some time. Um, so uh, I think hopefully next month we'll have that available to uh, do a, a grand unveiling for you all. Um, and then also you've seen in the news, the Walton County Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Um, that's an uh, interactive tool they've, they've brought out with the state um, this time around. So uh, you can find that online. Of course, Walton Tribune, Monroe Local have posted all the good links to it. Um, but it's a great tool to put in your pain points uh, and your suggestions to GDOT and the county and the cities um, so that we can continue to work and properly plan uh, our transportation features for the next uh, 10 years. Sounds perfect. Are there any questions for Logan? Hearing none, we'll move to Chris Bailey with the Central Services. Thank you, sir. A um, couple of quick points. Uh, facilities and grounds in the month of February picked up a little over 3,000 pounds of trash just on roadsides and whatnot. That's fairly standard, fairly average uh, for us on a monthly basis. Um, under the under marketing, uh, we shot out a spring newsletter uh, March 1st yesterday uh, that covers uh, months of uh, April, May, I said March, April, May, June, yeah. Um, traffic study, uh, kind of to follow up on what Logan said about the different traffic calming features that we'll discuss, uh, we're doing a follow up uh, study on Church and Davis Street to kind of find out what the impact was of uh, the construction that was done and the changes that were done so we can use that before data and compare it to the, the aftermath to kind of see what see what it's done for us. Um, exchange server, I had sent you guys out an email to let you know that the migration was uh, planned for this past weekend. Everything went successfully and that was done and then the the fun part of this report that I wanted to hit was I have a little small presentation for the uh, police station municipal court building. Uh, if I could get Mike to put some slides up, we're going to go through that and it'll kind of click through, but we are nearing the completion of this. Uh, we did the final punch list walk this morning at nine. Um, and I just, I kind of did a walk of the building and took some pictures of the fun stuff. And hope I still remember how to run a slideshow and it'll transfer over here in just a second. So you go in, essentially on the right side is gonna be your municipal court area, your entrance, your left side is the police department, your receptionist area, back behind, uh, windows are tinted, windows are bulletproof, you can see your little transaction slots on the bottom. Uh, your public restrooms that are up front for anybody that comes into the facility. Uh, anybody in the municipal court area can come back out right at the front of it. There's your municipal courtroom that we're going to, once we put chairs and everything in, we'll have them to where they're removable. So we could always use that as another site and another function if we had to for meetings. Um, 
essentially kind of what I call the green mile, except it's uh, it's the corridor going to the muni, muni court uh, holding cells. Uh, there are four in the actual facility. And it's just play services have done a great job. Um, finishing this out, I mean, you guys, were, it was a grocery store. It was an open shell with a concrete block wall going through it. Um, and this is what it's turned into. Evidence storage is probably close to the size of the actual police station right now. So, I mean, that's going to be fantastic to have that. Uh, the process and when it comes in, the backside of these lockers are controllable uh, and lockable from the inside <clears throat> to where they can put evidence in from the outside and then it's locked. And then they take it in, process it into evidence. Um, there's more of it. I'm assuming that's where all the paperwork and everything will be that they have to fill out to put with the evidence that they bring in. The benches won't be on top of the counter. <laughs> We'll move those. Uh, book in fingerprinting. Um, there's a room right of it, essentially, in that. That's the detox room. Um, our dog kennel, and yes, that floor looks awful, but it was just poured, so we're still waiting on the concrete to cure. That was the third time they had done that to get the slope of it right. Uh, vehicle processing, Sally Port area on the back side where they can pull, I think there's enough room for two or three vehicles, perhaps. Um, interrogation room. I don't know who the guy is in the reflection. That was the best I could do, sorry. Um, there's two of those, and then there are opposing rooms on the other side where you can watch the uh, interrogation. It's where the CID department will be, kind of adjacent to it. Um, and then just open, there's a huge open area that we left. Um, that you can expand it into whatever we want. We can put different, um, not cubicles, but desks in the area. This joins on the other side. Um, and it's just open to where we can add open space offices. Um, the training room, uh, that's a dry erase and all in the back that worked well and made me a little bit jealous. Break rooms. I think there are three or four scattered throughout the building, give or take. This is one of the larger ones. Chief's office. Did it in because the floor originally was uh, PCP and it looked like a deli. So <laughs> thought it looked much nicer with some carpet in it. Uh, restroom, showers, uh, men, women, lockers, uh, different stalls be one other picture coming yeah you're getting back to kind of where the showers are and I think there's three or four in each in the back <clears throat> and then exercise area in the back with a load of lockers that I believe Matt McClung found for us essentially almost at no cost to the city so that's just kind of a quick glance through it. I strongly encourage any and everyone to take a, well, not anyone, anyone on this council, um, directors, to take a visit out there because it, it's, it's rather incredible what it went from to what it's gone to. Uh, this has been a year-plus construction project. Um, I think uh, around March maybe of last year, we were approving bids to actually do this and on a nine-month timeline throw in a little COVID. Uh, here we are, uh, March of this year, kind of getting there. I feel like time we get furniture and everything situated, we're looking at spring to start moving here in the next, you know, month or so. And then maybe midsummer, summer, we're operational and actually functioning out of there is a goal. Um, but everything has, has went great. Uh, and one thing, too, I want to, Chad Gravett has been an absolute incredible project manager for this. Um, he has taken a lot off of me. Just, uh, I mean, he spent every day out there. Uh, that's where his, that's where his pay on a daily basis has went, uh, is to manage this build of the police department. He's done a wonderful job. So I know RV's excited. All the officers are. We as a city are too. So, but we are like that close. We just kind of got to touch up paint and dust off a few things. But no major issues this morning. Glad to take any questions. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions for Mr. Bailey? Have any of you been out there yet? Yes, I have. Yes. Certainly out there. Yeah.
Yeah, with That's right, I did. Yeah. It's, it Chad is fantastic. no been a joke. Minute. They've done they've done a great job. And Chris, I'm I'm glad you uh, mentioned Chad because he has been working with Jesus <laughs> to the bone. And I figured you'd give him a little love in the. Oh yeah, I told him I would. <laughs> I, keep, I keep my promises. <laughs> I'm moving to finance. Uh, Tyler Gregory, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Thompson, would you please make a report? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Um, you have before you the um, financial status report as of January 2021. Um, just want to point out that these are still unaudited um, year-end numbers. Um, because year-end accruals have not been done, um, we have to do 60-day accruals, and we will be finishing those up um, after February numbers are closed out. So I hope to have final numbers for you um, next month. <clears throat> um, I want to um, point out that finance staff has been busy doing year-end audit. Um, Malden Jenkins um, should be finishing up their field work over the next couple of weeks and um, hope to have final audited numbers and the CAFR to you um, probably April-ish, somewhere around there. Um, and um, hopefully no issues have been uncovered yet, so we hope everything keep, continues to go um, extremely well with that. Um, we continue to see an increase in our sales tax dollars um, year over year, um, and our property tax collections um, are <coughs> over 98% of what was budgeted. Um, we were actually only $55,000 short of what was budgeted for um, 2020, so um, that is a good indicator. And we have not gotten our February collections yet, so that will be accrued, so we may be closer than um, we have ever been, actually, on our property tax collections. Um, our utility non-payment cutoffs are actually down considerably compared to last year as well. Um, that probably is an indicator of our monthly extensions that y'all approved several years ago that um, a lot of customers are taking advantage of. Um, and we continue to see um, a high percentage of paid extensions each month. And also the um, budget billing that we rolled out um, last month. We have about 150 customers taking advantage of that so far. So we want to continue to get the word out on that. Um, and that is all I have. If y'all have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Are there any questions? Thank you, Tyler. Thank you so much. Great job. Yeah. Um, airport, please. Mr. Garrett? Mr. Bailey? Uh, thank you. Um, so the big topic, the runway paving project, uh, we approved last month for $888,888. Um, I still laugh at that number. Um, the plan is to have uh, our pre-construction meeting uh, middle of March and then to start just like South Madison is because of paving, because of weather, uh, first of April. Um, there's been a letter that was sent out to all people that have hangar space, tie down space, uh, businesses on site to let them know. We've also uh, put everything on Facebook, website, thought about putting something in the paper uh, just by chance kind of as we get closer um, but that will be as of right now about a three to a four week full closure of the airport uh, during the month of April and that's weather dependent and then following that it'll be another three to four month uh, sporadic closure as they're doing testing as they're doing final striping so let's fingers cross it doesn't <coughs> rain in April and May which has never happened um, and we get that project uh, going along as quickly as possible. I attached the letter that I sent out to everyone, um, and I've spoken to a lot of the people at the airport. And then two, the other thing of note, it's not the CARES extension or CARES Act that's kind of extended, but it's a Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act that uh, X amount of dollars from the FAA was sent down to the states or from the feds were sent to the state to be allotted to different airports uh, it's, So it's additional grant money that we can apply for and we've applied for and should get it It's only 13,000, but I say only that pays for all of my grading Essentially on the single hanger that's being built. So hey that covers that expense and we'll take it So and I'll be glad to answer any questions If there's no question for Chris, I guess that'll be all. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. I'm moving to Public Works, David Dickinson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, solid waste report, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Dickinson. Um, I got a few things. Um, a couple of projects that we're going to be doing, um, hopefully by April. Um, 
the automated gate is almost done. It'll be done the weekend. They got to come in and install some wiring, the loop, where it can open and close automatic. Uh, resurfacing the floor was scheduled for April the 9th and 10th to complete that project. Uh, so the other, other half of the, uh, uh, the tipping floor inside the transfer station. Uh, tonnage report, um, we deposited about 708, uh, 7,800 tons, same as we did last year. So we got up to a good start on the tonnage. Uh, we did add a new customer uh, this year, uh, Bulldog Disposal Services. So that's awesome. Uh, some of you may be aware, um, there was an incident at transfer station uh, a couple weeks ago where a low level of uh, radon was detected in one of our trailers going outside uh, to the landfill. Um, uh, the landfill has a monitor and they detected the um, uh, radiation material. Uh, it was low enough to where it didn't cause a health hazard or, or have us shut down. Uh, we did contact all the haulers to try to trace back where it may have come from. Uh, hadn't been able to get that done yet, uh, but um, we have been recommended to maybe install a, a monitor on our scale system. We are gonna upgrade, and we want, may, may wanna take that into consideration. Uh, what they've done is isolated the trailer, and uh, they still were testing as of last week. Uh, the, the level did not drop, so they're still gonna have to get the state permission to unload it, go through it, and see what's happening. Um, it's possible it may have came out of a medical facility, nursing home, or hospital, or some crushed, a high number of crushed smoke detectors or something like that may have been the cause. But uh, they are still evaluating and looking to hear from them. Uh, sometime in the, in the near future, give us an update on what, what's going on. And uh, happy to announce we're going to upgrade our curbside recycling program. We are going to the 65 gallon cart. Um, matter of fact, the, uh, the carts are ahead of schedule. They're gonna be here Thursday. Uh, the color is gonna be Pepsi Blue with City of Monroe brand on both sides, and then there will be uh, lids on the top, a branded lid to show you the acceptable items that's on top. And uh, the reason we went with a smaller card and a uh, different color is to try to distinguish uh, from the garbage, because we're gonna have a challenge, of course, but we will be, when we deliver the cards, we're gonna put an information, uh, information packet that's gonna be attached to the uh, cart when you get it. Um, it's gonna be some instructions in it, and also it's gonna be some educational uh, material. And um, we are going to start August 5th, I mean, April 5th, that's the target date. We, we're gonna deliver the cars probably a week before uh, that week, and basically you, you're gonna, we're gonna swap out your cart for a, uh, I mean, uh, for the recycle bins we're gonna, confiscate your recycling bins and put them back in the inventory and you use those for glass collection. And are you doing that during the pickup? We only deliver the cart a week ahead of the pickup. So once you set, once you get the cart the week ahead of time, you'll set out your, um, your uh, recycle bin and your regular uh, cart the following week. And we're gonna collect uh, the recycle bins and you'll, you'll hold on to your Everyone that has a recycle bin now will get a cart? Yes, uh, only, only we're gonna distribute only uh, participating customers right now. And we're gonna start with the Monday customers, the southwest area of, of the city. Uh, they are the biggest recyclers. It's kind of like a pilot also. So we'll get a real good idea of how, how the program is gonna work. Uh, hopefully uh, by June, July, the entire city, whoever's participating, get a card. And the material is not gonna change. It's, it's, gonna, it's the same thing you're collecting now, we're collecting now. Um, you're just gonna have three times the space and it'll be cleaner, you have a lid, um, cardboard, we're gonna 
try to collect, collect the cardboard uh, separate because Walton County want the cardboard. Uh, so uh, we ought to be able to generate more uh, resource recovery by going through the card system. Of course, the glass uh, still working out fine. We we averaging about two or three extra cu customers a week. Um, we collect 150 tons. Um, not 150, I wish. <laughs> but 1.50 tons in January. And that's pretty much it. Uh, take any questions you might have on anything we talked about. Mr. Denny, what would it cost for a new customer to pick up or to get one of these carts to start the recycling program? Uh, it's included in service. Yes, no cost. So they just need to call? Yeah, they are call and opt in, just like we do the 18-gallon bins. Uh, for a new customer who, who, who has not started participating, but um, uh, the regular customers, they'll get theirs. No, no question. Do you have the date yet for our um, cleanup day? Yeah, that's, that's what we're going to talk about next, uh, Great American Cleanup. Uh -huh. uh, before we move on, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'd just like to, to have on record that District 6 is in the southwest corner, so that means that we're some of the best recyclers. In <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next item is the uh, Great American Cleanup. You doing that, Mr. Smith? Uh, yes, sir. Um, it is April 9th through 23rd, um, and we'll we'll do. Uh, we anticipate more participation this year. I mean, because there's a lot uh, people been at home and uh, they got a lot to do at home. So we we expect a high turnout this year. But it's the same we way we've always done. We just want your approval to participate. Uh, customers can bring. Uh, bulk items to the transfer station, uh, no charge, but you have to live inside the city limits of money. All right, and that's an action item, so we need a committee vote on it. I need a motion and a second. Move to approve. Motion to approve by uh, Mr. Little. Second. Second by Mr. Gregory. Call the question. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that will go to the consent agenda. Next week, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Transportation, Mr. Steele. Thank you, Mr. Dickinson. Just highlighting a few areas um, in the report. We got, we're got we reporting for the month of January, so we got a good fresh start for the numbers in front of you. Had 34 uh, units work completed in the fleet maintenance division. Our street division is con currently uh, working um, with the parks guys, doing some demo throughout the parks. It was evident over in Matthews Park where they, they tore down a building and they've, they've been in Cocoa Park, tearing down some of that stuff, getting ready to do that, cleaning some of those areas up. Um, one thing of note is we've shut the, the leaf truck down. Um, I say that in relief. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's the hectic part of the year for, for our guys, our department division. Um, we still are getting, some, getting a good many calls that come in, but we're trying to create some work orders for that and um, get some of that taken care of case by case scenario. But for the bulk of it, that truck is down until next fall. Um, waiting on the green up, those guys are, are out picking up, the, the right of way guys, they're out picking up uh, litter. Once the green up comes, um, they'll be out every day cutting grass, keeping our right of ways under control. Just about ready to start doing some patching. Uh, through our LMIG stuff, and I'll touch back basis from uh, the South Madison project. Um, when that project touches South Madison, there'll be some other streets behind that that, that get the attention as well, but uh, there's a section of, of uh, roadway that's outside of the scope of that CDB project that we will pave through our LMIG stuff, our LMIG program, so it'll go from spring all the way out to Highway 11 by the, the county jail. That'll be done continual. Um, will be a really nice pro product once it's completed. Um, so the the rest of the um, streets that were on the LMIG project, we, we'll start doing some deep patching there. They'll be milled down as well and paved. So we're speaking with, with Mr. Bradley before the, the meeting started. Um, and I'll continue to put this bug in your ear. Paving's gonna 
become more and more and more expensive every year because we, we've got to start milling these streets down mm -hmm. to, uh, to get the product and the lifespan that we need throughout our infrastructure. Um, unless you have some questions, or if you do, I'll, I'll be glad to take them before the report. All right. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. Hearing none, let's move to the next item, which is the uh, parking lot uh, rehabilitation at Highland and Broad. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. What we're seeking tonight is approval for a complete rehab of the, the Murray lot across the street from City Hall. Um, it's a public use parking lot that we're in agreement with, but to hopefully extend the agreement with the owner, uh, we're proposing a rehab of this lot, which will include um, some patching of the existing infrastructure that's there, that's messed up, a, um, a new retain concrete retaining wall, some additional parking places added through being able to get into that far corner where the retaining wall is going to be. So there'll be some grading, um, some new asphalt put into that corner, as well as new striping and directional striping, being able to get in and out of that lot safely. So we're going to add two to three places. Um, so we're recommending approval of $58,500 from J&R Consolidated Holdings to provide that contingent upon the approval um, of the extended agreement with the property owner. Speak to that agreement. Uh, we we're hoping to have it ready for tonight, and maybe next week, and maybe next month. It just depends on uh, the ability to get that back from that property owner. But uh, I think it'll be a positive. I think we'll, we're heading in the right direction with it. What would the time be? <clears throat> yeah. So we're looking for a five-year extension at a minimum, uh, and then looking at a year-to-year -year after that. So uh, for any capital improvement, I think we should have a minimum. Of Five years, so it's going to be consistent with the budget. All right, that's uh, an action item for the committee, so I need a motion. I move to approve. <coughs> motion by Mr. Gregory to approve. I need a second. I second. Second by Mr. Little. If it's contingent upon completing the agreement. Any questions, comments? All right, call the question. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that uh, carries unanimously. And we'll go to the consent agenda, Mr. Mayor. So let's see. Next, we have the vehicle GPS purchase conversion. I've got that one. Um, <coughs> what we're asking for here is a request to essentially upgrade our uh, GPS units that we have in our vehicles throughout the city now. Um, technology has gotten to the point that we can get more out of these units. We've actually had them for the past four or five years, so this would be the first upgrade. Um, total cost, and this is spread between all departments, and the breakdown was on the last page, is just a touch over $20,000. And this is the data plans that go with them. This is the equipment itself and the install by uh, one of AT&T's fleet contractors, which greatly saves us time and, and effort in doing this uh, and puts the complete warranty on those guys. Um, on the first month's bill, we'll actually get about a $6,000 credit back for turning in the old units that they will take with them. Uh, so essentially, about a third of the total cost will be refunded back to us after 30 days. And um, then the monthly fee is something that we already pay uh, for what we currently have. So that just carries on. It's already within the budget. Uh, just split between departments as it matches the quantity units that they have. I'd be glad to take any questions. Any questions for Mr. Bale? All right, hearing none, I need a motion from the committee. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Little to approve. I need a second. Second. Second by Mr. Gregory. Any comments or questions? Call the question. All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? That carries unanimously, Mr. Mayor, and goes to the consent agenda. Thank you. And I believe that's all we have. Thank you, Mr. Dickinson. Thank you, everybody. Uh, moving to Nathan Little, please. Mayor, Mr. 
Telecom. Thank you, Mr. Little. Telecom report. Yes, sir. Uh, the first thing I want to bring up tonight is not only uh, my report, but we got this uh, information a little late. Um, we get a report from MEAG of the uptime and availability of our substations throughout the year and the downtime of any, any breaker operations. Uh, we had the best availability of our substations, 100% availability of our substations we've ever had. 100% uh, of our breakers were owned 99.7% of the time during last year. Even with the storms, uh, several, uh, let's say, slightly intoxicated people that hit our poles, uh, we still had that 99.7% uptime. There's two things that, that go into that. Uh, the big thing is the uh, vegetation controls y'all allow us to do in our contracted services. Keeping those tree limbs cut back 15 feet from the conductors has hugely increased that availability time. And the other thing is that our ability to switch uh, outages down to the lowest possible area, uh, which is another thing I'll allow us to do over the past four or five years. So I want to thank y'all for allowing us to do that. We want the meters to turn. We want people's lights on. Um, so uh, that 99.7% availability is, is huge to us. Next thing is Publix came in uh, like a gangbuster a couple weeks ago, and they're ready to start building if it'll ever quit raining. Uh, so we've met out there, uh, all utilities. I've met with Rodney and some of his staff trying to work out the, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a draw into where the electric needs to go and where the gas needs to go, but there's also, you know, what's physically on the dirt out there. So we worked out with the uh, contractor uh, where I need to be, where Rodney's gas needs to be, and we're going to, as soon as it quits raining, we're going to start building out there. They also have repaired the access road that we need to uh, finish the pole line between the actual Publix building and Highway 11. It had been washed out. They didn't uh, put the gravel down to support that. So we're going to take, now that they've got it built back for us, we're going to take care of that road. We've got to be able to get back in there for the next 25, 30 years. The Hit and Drive three-phase project is done, the overhead portion, waiting on load values from that little development in the back. I bring that up because that is one of the worst overhead projects we have ever worked on. Every single pole had to be hand dug they filled with water. Uh, I had no idea that from Armstead Circle back to the bank is basically a swamp. Every, every hole we dug was full of water. And we had to put two to three feet of gravel in the base of each one of those pole holes, and now we still have one that we're having to support, and we're figuring out a way to keep it from sinking to wherever the bottom is. The anchors at the end of that pole uh, line are 22 feet deep to grab good dirt. That's probably the deepest anchors I've, I've seen us put in on a, on a 336 line. Just a real water-soaked area. I mean, everywhere is water-soaked right now, but that is the, the worst I've ever dealt with. Um, we've got more products showing up uh, for the fiber to the X. The big thing we're waiting on right now are, are the uh, polyconcrete boxes. We've got 250 that are supposed to be here any day. We've got another 300 on order. As soon as those show up, we're going to start putting pipe in the ground. We have... Uh, approximately 175,000 feet of fiber sitting on the yard. Now, that sounds like a lot, but one project at the end of uh, Michael Etchison is going to take up around 14, 16,000 feet. Um, so but we got product coming, and it's just getting that in place to, to start. And the boxes are the – now, we can get conduit fairly easily. We've got some sitting on the yard. It's just the, the boxes and the, and the distribution taps are the big thing. Uh, we've increased – the downstream capacity on our cable system to just, you know, give us a little more cushion, give us a little more time to make sure the customers are getting what they need um, through our cable modem while we transition to fiber. Uh, we're, um, the other two things I want to talk about are things we will hopefully bring to you all next week. Um, one is uh, Bell Mead. Uh, Bell Mead, they're building a new house on the end of the road. And um, we did not feel comfortable feeding that home off the existing infrastructure on Bell Mead. We ended up feeding that home off of uh, Alcove Street. And the reason is we've had trouble with the wire, the underground power, electric wire in that subdivision for several years. Uh, that wire was put in the ground in 1989. Uh, we are uh, we'll, we'll be, in our CIP next year, we'll actually be bringing in. Uh, one of our projects is to replace a lot of underground wire that was put back in in the, you know, in the 80s, early 80s on into the, uh, 89. But there are other lots on Bellmead. And if another home uh, 
is built in there, I don't think I can supply the power for it. So we've had a contractor come out and meet with us about replacing that power line. And while we do that, we'll just drop in a conduit for the fiber project anyway. We're going to be in there. So uh, we have replaced on the end out to the old, uh, uh, I forget the name of the, the Sam, well, the Mill, yeah, the Felker house at the end. That failed 11 times in one year, that wire did. So we've already replaced that by just, they were redoing the yard anyway, so we just dug it up. Um, we've got to bore this in, so it's going to be a little expensive, but uh, we hope to bring that next week. The other item is the uh, email that Logan sent out, and, and Logan input anytime you want to in this one. This is where we, we're going to request some more CIP funds to expand our fiber system outside the city limits and to help pay for some of the lots that are coming along. We've got a, a little bit of CIP money left to do some of the upcoming subdivisions, uh, but we also have some very roll off a log projects that are just right beside our fiber line that we could we could knock out and the ROI is the, the first one we've looked at is 22 months it's 60 percent penetration uh, so we'll come back to you next week asking for some more funding to, to knock those out while we're doing all this fiber work let's don't leave any money laying on the table and I'll take any questions you may have any questions for Brian <coughs> thank you Brian Middlebrook. Thank you, Mr. Little. Uh, just a couple of updates on our uh, projects. Uh, the 186 gas extension we pulled off of temporarily. Uh, the cold weather made it really difficult to work with the six inch plastic. So we dropped off and we knocked out uh, the fields at Alcove, which is a new subdivision. Well, it's actually an old subdivision that's being just now getting started. But uh, so we got that gas installed. Uh, this past week, where it's, uh, it's going to serve 61 lots. Also ordered the seven miles worth of four inch plastic for the old Monroe uh, Madison Chandler Road extension. That's out in Good Hope. And uh, weather permitting, we'll start the gas line at Publix this week. Uh, as far as the uh, Alcove River, the 138 sewer extension, that bid's been awarded. They'll be starting on that soon. I think he's got his material ordered and uh, waiting on it to show up. So hopefully that will be, be moving pretty quick. The sewer plant design and review, uh, we finally got it out to the equipment uh, RFP out. It's due March the 25th. So uh, hopefully we'll get, get that going here and try to get that plant upgraded. Uh, water distribution, the 30-inch lines, it's... Uh, should be bid here in the next month or two. Weedham is almost complete with it. Uh, the Piedmont Industrial Water Main Extension was completed last week. That's uh, That gets us down to the cul-de-sac. Now we'll just wait for them to do the connect road to 78, and then we'll finish that connection. Uh, the Cedar Ridge, the 20-inch water main, is 50% uh, complete. Weather permitting, he should finish this week on it. And uh, the Loganville extension. I think we're still waiting on that one easement. Uh, hoping to have it in time for him to leave Cedar Ridge and flip to the other end and try to finish it. So, but, uh, All the, the lines full of water. Uh, it's passed the pressure test. Uh, pump stations completed uh, other than a few things with the uh, to uh, touch up on. But uh, As soon as we get all this connected, we'll get it chlorinated and start selling Loganville some water. So if you got any questions, I'll be more than happy to try to answer those. When the sewer RFP goes out, do you anticipate the equipment will be available or is that going to be a long wait? I'm anticipating a, a long wait. We're seeing it on everything else. There's two pumps we ordered back last June we ain't got them yet. That ain't good. <laughs> nope. Buddy, I noticed that Logan will agree with Walton County to buy some more water from them. What, yes, sir. Are, are they <coughs> not thinking they get enough from us? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about. I saw the article, too. Rodney, how many projects do you have going on right now? 
got a few minutes. Let me count them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, while Brian's laughing at that question about you, Brian, same thing for you. How many projects do you have going? Do, do you, can you show us a, a, a project list with a 30, 60, 90, 120 day timeline on it so we can just flip from one page to the next rather than, I mean, following what you're saying is great, but it's easy, easy reference for, for every one of us to say, okay, well, we have these 14 things coming up and Brian's going to have the new lights in downtown on such and such a date and then we're going to run underground at, at the downtown green by you know, 120 days after that, so on and so forth. Just okay. those two things would be great. No problem. Anything else for Rodney? Not. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, moving to public safety, Mr. Bradley. Uh, Fire Department, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Uh, what you have before you be our January call statement that we have. Um, I'll run through it fairly quickly here. The false alarms, uh, false calls, five fires. We report six. Two of those I'll touch base at the end of uh, the segment right here. Good intent calls, 71. Hazardous conditions not related to fire, five. Our EMS side, 138 calls and service calls, which could be as simple as just turning off water to a house with a broken pipe, eight calls. Total of 233 calls. Uh, what I would like to highlight out of that would be the two fires that occurred inside the city limits of Monroe um, <clears throat> that occurred. The first one I'll highlight here occurred on 1-5 of 2021 at 501 Pine Park Street, Monroe, which we only show a loss of $500 on that. Uh, that would be the stove. Uh, investigation turned out and showed that there were some rodents that had created a nest up under the stove. And so just the timing was right when they went to cook. The rodents' nest was uh, lost to the heat. <laughs> Much as I hate to say it, that's what that was on that call there. Uh, so very minimal loss. Uh, the occupants noticed it real quick with the smoke and uh, turned the heat off, and we removed the stove from the structure. Uh, and kept that to a very minimal. The other incident occurred on uh, January 16th at 416 Spring Place. This is a little bit more notable. It was a working fire for uh, our fire department. Um, we do uh, show a loss of $40,000 on that property. Uh, the fire, well, the fire at the, uh, the first one, I'm sorry, occurred at 9 p.m. This fire on the, the 416 Spring Place was a 1 a.m. fire, and that's notable for a particular reason because that's a, a large loss of life and property during that time of night, but the smoke alarm at this residence alerted the family, uh, and they picked up on the fire that was inside the garage. Uh, everybody was able to uh, vacate, call 911, get an excellent response from our services, uh, get the fire extinguished, kept largely contained to within the garage. Uh, couldn't put an exact finger on it, but we do feel largely that there was a multi-outlet, a, a, a strip outlet that uh, was probably related to starting the fire. Um, but thank goodness for the uh, for the smoke alarm, or, or we'd be featured again on the news like you see in Gwinnett County and some other places that have been uh, reporting fire fatalities uh, around the area. Uh, the one loss I would like to talk about that doesn't appear on uh, the paper here uh, that was kind of heartfelt to me, and I'll, I'll bring this up if it'll please the mayor and the council. Uh, we lost Mr. Hubert Hawkins, retired captain from the city of Monroe in January, uh, which uh, got me to thinking, you know, in May, I don't know if the council was in chambers or how things were, we lost Joe Lachlan, retired captain of the city of Monroe. Uh, two living legacies, uh, both in their own rights, and, uh, you know, we really didn't get to do much for for them, funerals, and uh, I, I spoke with Mr. Ross Bradley, funerals have been very uh, far in between to how you can honor our folks. So if uh, the mayor and council would hear my request, I would like to recognize those two individuals because the services that they provided the city uh, for their careers uh, was incredible. Uh, mentors to me personally, uh, outstanding individuals, uh, in their own rights. So uh, if y'all would take that under consideration and what would suit best would be would be great with us. 
uh, but take that into consideration. Uh, if I have any questions about anything, I'll be glad to answer them to my ability. Anyone have any questions? Can I ask, uh, Logan, can you work with the our department on proper recognition for those two individuals? Yes, sir. Be happy to bring it back to us with a recommendation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to the police department, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Um, you have our numbers here before you, and, and what I like to do from my position is compare last year's to this year's, and uh, there's some good significant changes, which is what I, I, I like seeing is our numbers are down from where they were last year at this time. Uh, calls for service for 2021 in January was 1518. Uh, in 2020, we had 1624, so that's down by about 100 calls. Um, area checks, and I, I mention this every time I know at our department head meetings, but I think it's important to mention that because the more proactive we are as a, a organization, the more it has a deterrent on the crime that's going on in the city. And again, this reflects that. Uh, we had 8,877 last year. We did 5,521. Um, and our part one, part two crimes are down significantly, which is good, which, which is what we want to see. But even our arrests are down as well. Um, my, our joint operations unit, which is that proactive unit, they executed uh, three search warrants in the month of January, uh, made 16 felony arrests, and uh, confiscated 10 guns off the streets. Um, and just kind of elaborate a little bit on how important it is on the staffing. You know, each year I come to the table and I'm asking for more officers to be able to meet the needs of the community. And I think this weekend in itself kind of reflected that. Uh, we had a couple incidents and that went on. One was a uh, trying to steal the tithe and offering box off of the 1025 church <coughs> in East Spring. The response our officers had and knowing the individuals in our community made a rest on that immediately. Uh, Sunday, uh, while I was actually at church, received information of an assault that happened at 8.30 Sunday morning on an 85-year-old female uh, from an individual that had escaped from a home. Uh, and from the time we received the 911 call to the time we made an arrest was about eight and a half minutes, which is impressive, super impressive, to how we responded to the scene. We actually caught the suspect in the wood line, was able to make that arrest. Um, and, and again, like I said, that's that's very impressive, and that's an importance. You know, you hear me say that when we have the meetings during budget meeting of response times. It's crucial on how quick we respond to the needs of individuals when they make that 911 call. Um, we made an arrest on our uh, on the suspect that was wanted from our Christmas morning homicide we had down in uh, Magnolia Homes. That subject's in custody. And last thing I want to mention is I reached out to our public safety committee. You guys got an email, I think last week I sent that out on the, uh, uh, just entertaining the thought of implementing these uh, school zone uh, cameras that detect uh, uh, the radar speed of people coming through the school zones. Uh, that's something that I'll be bringing forward uh, to each of you in the near future. Right now they're gonna be doing the traffic study on that. And then uh, of course there would be an agreement between us and the, and the uh, company Red Speed but everything that I'm seeing on the front end is, looks pretty positive. It's at no cost to us. Uh, it would be a percentage base of uh, what they would receive out of it and what we would receive out of it. I think it's a 65-35. 65 of all the fines uh, or revenues generated from that would come to the city. 35% would go back to the company that incurs all the cost of uh, putting these cameras up. And uh, of course, um, it would not only be used for the detection of people speeding in the school zones, but it also would be utilized uh, almost like a big brother, if we have some kind of uh, other crimes, violent crimes, it would be able to tell you if those vehicles came through those areas also. So, And I'll be happy to take any questions if you should have any. Oh, and let me just say this too, <laughs> sorry. Uh, just between yesterday and today, our officers, and uh, Officer Paramore is here, and he's, he's done a good job on this, but we've recovered three stolen vehicles just since yesterday and today and made one arrest off of that. So, Very proud of the... Uh, the response and actions of our officers, I, I can't brag on them enough. We're not perfect, I get it, but they do a really good job. Again, I'll answer any questions you should have any. Any questions for Chief Hodge? That's all we have. Thank you, RV. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Larry. Um, moving to Ms. Malcolm, Planning and Code. Mr. Kelly, monthly report, please. Yes, thank you, Ms. Malcolm. Um, 
just some of the highlights from the report you have in front of you there. Uh, this covers the period of January uh, for this year. We had 114 code inspections during that time frame, and we wrote a total of 39 permits. One thing I usually don't highlight, but I thought I would uh, this time, $102,000 worth of permitting based on the MAB project getting fully permitted and ready to go. So we're looking forward to the first foundation inspections out there and getting that up and running like Brian was alluding to earlier. We had five new businesses in that time frame, had three that closed. Uh, we also got uh, Main Street Apartments. They have their full CO now. They were operating under a temporary CO, but they're, they're um, up and running. Monroe Pavilion, like we mentioned, still going on uh, and ready to roll. The row under construction had a little delays from um, COVID, as you can see from their sign. I thought that was pretty cool how they put that time frame on their, on their outdoor banner. Um, Grace Monroe Church is uh, finishing projects as, as uh, they go along. The main, the new gym at the old school um, is uh, their current sanctuary and the classroom building is coming along quite well. Um, and Ready Clinic is still under, uh, under construction out there next to Arby's. Um, the city marshals removed 117 signs from the roadway. They wrote 204 repair cleanup orders and did re-inspections on those and investigated two tampering and theft cases, which resulted in six citations. Um, Historic Preservation granted a COA at 213 West Highland Avenue. And um, you've already seen these, but the Planning Commission looked at uh, 1360 Armistead Circle for their variance, as well as a COA for uh, 1110 North Broad Street. And if you have any questions about the balance of the report or anything else in our department, I'll be happy to answer those. Are there any questions? Um, I was just curious, uh, Carl Retreat talked about some of the packets and some of the ideas for different areas that we wanted to be able to get information easily into. And I was just wondering if we, if we haven't made any progress on that. I'm yeah. No, we have made, made progress. Brad's here. He's been working on that. Um, we've been going through those and trying to massage them and figure out what needs to be in them, what needs to be removed, what's going to make it clearer and easier and more efficient. Um, so that's a work in progress. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think Thank we're getting you. a lot closer. <clears throat> you mean I think there's an intergovernmental agreement with Walton County we need to cover? Yes, ma'am. I'll take that. Um, this is uh, our second round for this IGA with Walton County and the city of Loganville for aerial photometrics. And what this does is gives uh, an ultra high resolution ortho rectified photography model uh, to the tax assessor's office so they have better detail. So they're not missing anything when they do the property appraisals. We also get the benefits of better resolution. And uh, like for Q Public, when you're playing around with it, you get better re resolution. Uh, with this deal. Um, I think Social Circle is not a part of this, but uh, the bulk of the county will be covered uh, with this deal. Now, we're not subject to the funding until next year, but because Walton County is late into their current fiscal year, they have to go ahead and get this uh, readied for their, their upcoming new fiscal year. So um, the prices have not changed. Um, the total package for us is $20,166.05 over a three-year period. Do we need a motion on yeah, that? From the committee. From the committee. Do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Malcolm. I move in economic development report, Ross Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Ms. Kreiser, would you mind sharing the economic development report with us? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, you have a couple things on there. One is uh, it's an image of a hard copy of our downtown Monroe vibrancy report. These are our numbers that are a um, culmination of the reporting we do monthly to the Georgia Main Street program, so putting all those numbers together. And we're very pleased with um, those indicators of growth even in the interesting year that we had last year. Um, a lot of property sold, um, a lot of continued investment um, in downtown, and even we were able to do some events as the year got through, so um, we're pleased with that. We've also been finalizing our 2021 event calendar. We'll have the pretty version of that. You have just a printed list of dates and what has been set. 
um, so far. Um, we'll be mailing those out like we usually do to the community so everyone can know when the events are happening uh, downtown. And um, also the big, big initiative that's just kicked off is our um, branding um, effort with the Providence and Institute. So that, that link there, brandmonroe.com, hopefully you started to see it on social media. I'm sure many of you will be contacted for potential focus groups or interviews, but if you fill out the survey, that would be great. That's the, the easiest way to do it and give input. Share that with anyone that you know. Um, we want as much input as we can get so that we can have a brand that really represents our entire community. Um, they are, they'll be um, here later in March to start doing some focus groups. They also can do those virtually. If you have thoughts or someone that you think needs to be interviewed or you really want to help facilitate that, please um, reach out to me and I'll um, be sure to connect you with the staff at Carl Vincent Institute. And we're excited about that and it's going to be a long process. They're doing the focus groups now. We do have a citizen committee, a steering committee for the branding effort. And um, it'll be much later in the year, like November, December, when they'll have a final product to reveal to the community for us. Uh, and last thing I just mentioned, we had our, um, our annual downtown reception for sponsors and volunteers last night. And we did have some award winners from 2020. I didn't want to put them in this because then everybody would have known who got the awards last night. But I'll, uh, we'll include that in our uh, March report so you can see who, who we honored for their contributions to downtown last year. Um, and with that, car shows coming up March 13th. That'll be our first event of 2021. So next, not this weekend, but the next Saturday. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Maybe that, that event last night was outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Moving to Ms. Crawford with Parks. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Bailey. Thank you, ma'am. A uh, couple quick updates. Uh, Pilot Park, the shade structures that uh, we had in the CIP for this year have been ordered and were delivered yesterday. We're obviously going to wait for a little bit drier weather to install those so we don't tear up the grass at Pilot Park. Um, that park has just continued to kind of thrive and flourish, uh, flourish, uh, ever how you say that. Um, and and it's, just, it's always busy. I mean, rain, sleet, or shine almost. Um, and then Matthews Park, good news, bad news, good news is we have our restroom structure. It's extremely cool. It's not sitting where it's supposed to be. Um, weighs 48,000 pounds, and the, uh, the truck could not get there. Everything's so wet. The crane actually got stuck. We got that out of there. Um, so, again, we're just kind of at the mercy of Mother Nature. Um, pad, the site, everything's ready. It's just once everything kind of gets situated, dries out just a little bit, it's probably raining right now, um, we'll have that put in place. And I think that's a, it's a good template for what we're going to put at the other parks. I think Pilot will possibly uh, be next, and then we'll look at something maybe for Childers, but I'm not sure the, uh, the slope of everything and the layout will actually work. But it's a, it's a solid structure. It's a good one. Um, and um, the only other thing, uh, an opening event maybe for Pilot and Matthews, I think sometime if COVID continues to maybe calm down sometime in May, uh, we have kind of a, you know, a, an event that's on the same day and have uh, maybe some food trucks, vendors, different things. I think the uh, playground equipment company is going to be there, uh, cook for us, uh, give out shirts and different prizes. I think it'll be a fun event. So we'll maybe shoot for that in May once weather improves. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Any questions for Mr. Bailey? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Crawford. Uh, moving to items for discussion, the application of beer and wine package sales and spiritus liquors and beer and wine on premise consumption at the row. Mr. Kelly? Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Um, I believe that application is in order. That application is in order, Mayor. Great, thank you. And that is the row, right? Not the rows. Row, yes. I make sure I had the, the right place. Um, any questions or comments for, for Paul or Patrick? Moving to the second reading, uh, offenses and miscellaneous provisions, possession of marijuana ordinance amendment. Um, we'll have the second reading at next week's council meeting. Uh, did you have anything to 
Is that tonight? No, no, Mayor. It's just a second reading to clean up that ordinance. Okay, good. Um, n number three, modified development agreement with MAB American. Uh, this regarding the Monroe Pavilion. Mr. President. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, this has been a lot of back and forth over the past few years. We finally got to a, a spot that, you know, everybody feels uh, like they're coming out a winner, and, and that's what you want in a, in a development agreement. So the big change here uh, in this development agreement um, is that MAB and its contractors are going to handle the building of the water main from our water plant down West Marable. Uh, back through the woods and then across Green Street to Mayfield and then back into the MAB development. That's a big task and they can go really quickly. Uh, excuse me, they're going to build it, but we're going to pay for it. It's capped at $1.6 million in this agreement, but they're waiving off $500,000 in previous upsizing charges from the past agreement um, that I brought to you. So that's a significant contribution uh, from MAB. Uh, to get this project rolling. Um, there may be a couple of minor uh, cleanups in here regarding a little bit of language uh, as to a couple of the other water lines uh, that we're looking at. Um, by the time I get it back to you next week, um, these were literally last minute uh, amendments, but they don't materially impact uh, this agreement as it's presented here. Um, it will change probably section B uh, sub I, just a, a couple sentence clarifications there um, as to how we're uh, going to work together on completion of some of these 10 inch lines. And there may be a slight revision to the size of the, the water main from a, a 20 inch to an 18 inch, but that will not significantly impact any pressures or flows um, as that's been tested by our, our engineers and our new water model that you guys approved a couple months ago. So that's proved very valuable here. So all that's to say, um, you know, we're moving in the right direction with these guys and, and this is really going to be fruitful for the city of Monroe and our uh, business partners over at MAB. Thank you, Mr. Probst. Are there any questions for Logan? We'll finish up with that next week. Um, we, we have a couple of items uh, that require action tonight. Um, first is a resolution on sanitary sewer and wastewater <clears throat> system preservation. Uh, we'll go to Logan first and then Mr. Rose, uh, Mr. Rosenthal. Yeah, so uh, we have this resolution. Uh, we, we've discussed it some in the past, and, you know, a little bit of the planning retreat about, uh, you know, our, our wastewater system and the upgrades needed and, um, it's, it is a precious resource here in the city of Monroe for our, our citizens and businesses. And as Rodney just alluded to, <laughs> some of the equipment for the upcoming rehab could be a long time coming. So um, we feel that, you know, how do we further protect um, our city sewer system um, is to make sure that we are not going to run any more of these sewer lines to other developments outside of the city of Monroe. We're going to preserve this for inside developments other than those that are already, uh, they've already purchased their taps um, or we have, you know, some other development agreements that, uh, that precede this. But that's the gist of it. It's, uh, you know, protecting our resources. Are there any questions for Logan? If I understand this correctly, this has no <coughs> date, correct? It does not. This, you know, there'd be a moratorium until this council decides otherwise. That's correct. And, and, and what we, as we all know, just to clarify, what we shoot for is our density in the cities, and, you know, we just don't want to sprawl. Um, I think this is a great way to, to tackle that issue head on. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal? Thank you, Mayor. This is a resolution of the Mayor and the Council of City of Monroe, Georgia, to preserve its sewer capacity and to limit the use of the city sanitary sewer wastewater system to within the limits of the City of Monroe. Whereas the City of Monroe, Georgia, has been vested with substantial power to regulate the use of public utilities and property within the city for the purposes of maintaining the health, moral, safety, security, peace, and general welfare of the city, and whereas the city has the legislative power to adopt reasonable resolutions or regulations relating to public utilities and property within the city for which no provision has been made by general law and which are not inconsistent with the Constitution of the State of Georgia or any charter provision applicable thereto. 
whereas the mayor and the city council pursuant to Article 6, Section 6.01 of the city charter have authority and power to acquire, hold, build, extend, equip, maintain, and operate a system of sewerage both within and without the corporate limits and to contract or furnish sanitary sewer utilities to consumers outside the corporate limits of the city, whereas the city has provided sanitary sewer waste service uh, to residential and commercial properties inside and outside the city limits for numerous years, and whereas after review and in light of the 2020 Municipal Water Systems Annual Report for the city, the mayor and the city council has determined that it should consider appropriate policies, regulations, and standards governing the city's development to encourage balanced and sustainable growth of its utility infrastructure in light of rapid population growth and commercial growth within the city's limits. And whereas the sanitary sewer system report states that the city's sanitary sewer wastewater system currently exceeds the permissive <laughs> capacity of the city sewer system, and whereas the current capacity of the city sewer system cannot be increased without significant and substantial outlays, capital outlays for which no provisions have been made, and whereas on May 10th, 2005, the city through the former Water, Light, and Gas Commission previously considered the need to limit and did limit the availability of the city's sewer system only to areas located within the city's corporate limits and the city's electric service territory. Whereas the Mayor and City Council had the responsibility and duty to manage and allocate its limited resources, including wastewater sewer capacity. And whereas the city's sewer system requires significant capital outlay, state review and permitting, and a significant amount of time and manpower to procure, facilitate, and maintain, whereas the Mayor and City Council are taking into account the experiences of other counties and municipalities that are experiencing the challenges of rapid growth, and whereas the growth of residential and commercial development within the city's limits has and will continue to impact the city's utility infrastructure and its economic well-being and public health, as well as the health, safety, and welfare of its citizens, and whereas the Mayor, City Council, and City staff, as a part of studying the city's residential and commercial growth trends, have determined that the city's sewer system capacity needs to be conserved immediately to protect the city's utility, city's utility infrastructure and to encourage the safety, security, and well, general well-being of the city's citizens and businesses, and whereas the Mayor and City Council have determined that it is in the best interest of the city, the city's utility infrastructure, the public welfare, and the health and safety of the city's residences and businesses to limit the availability of the city's sewer system to only those properties located within the corporate limits of the city. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council uh, that the Mayor and City Council of Monroe do hereby adopt the following resolutions. Number one, the preamble of this resolution shall be considered to be and is hereby incorporated by reference as it fully set out herein. Number two, the city of Monroe, Georgia shall no longer provide any sanitary sewer wastewater utility services of any kind whatsoever to any property not located within the corporate limits of the city of Monroe, Georgia. And number three, notwithstanding the foregoing, as of the date of this resolution, any property that is not located within the corporate limits of the city, but that is currently connected to the city sewer system may continue to remain connected to and served by the sewer system without interruption. Additionally, as of the date of this resolution, any property that is not located within the corporate limits of the city and for which the appropriate sewer system capacity recovery fee has already been paid to the city or provisions have already been made relating thereto via an executed development agreement as part of the normal ordinary permitting and connection process shall be allowed to connect to and be served by the sewer system if so connected within 24 months of the date of this resolution. Other than these two exceptions provided for herein, no other property located outside of the corporate limits of the city shall be allowed to access, use, or be connected to the city's sewer system for any reason. So resolved the second day of March 2021. That is the resolution, Mayor. Thank you, Paul. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> are, there any, are there any questions for Mr. Rosenthal? Not for him, but no, maybe Logan or him. If, in the last paragraph, we do have some outstanding approvals at this point. Is that correct? That is correct. Which will be on it. They will be, yeah. Correct. Those TAP fee or those system recovery fees that have been paid or development agreements that have been executed anticipating connection, those will be honored with this proviso and we'll contact those affected parties, which there appear to only be two, that they need to wrap up within 24 months. Both projects that we're aware of should have no problem and are on track to wrap up within the 24 month window. So that proviso was to address those that already exist that we're aware of. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I have a motion, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Move to adopt the resolution. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Dickinson and a second by Mr. Nathan Little and a third by Mr. Ross Bradley. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Next. 
Next, moving to lighting repairs at US 78 and Highway 11, Mr. Thompson. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, as most of you know, this has been a, an ongoing issue for many years. Um, I still say the DOT owns those lights, but um, they say I, we own them, and neither one of us can prove it. So at the budget meeting, we discussed this as, a, as a, an, an addendum to our CIP. <laughs> um, we estimated it was going to cost $100,000 to repair those. And uh, we came in at 76,000. $115.25. Now that is to replace the conduit, pull the wire. Um, we have, uh, Mr. Martin has found a, a pole that can be made that is, I mean, it is almost exactly like those poles. Uh, the only difference is the arms are a little bit shorter, but riding down the road at 80 miles an hour, you're not gonna know the difference. Um, the reason we have to go underground is we have had situations in the past where someone hit one of the poles, and the overhead wire pulled the next two poles down. So it needs to be underground. It was designed underground, but that wire failed over the years. Those lights, I don't know if they were put in in the 60s when that, when that bridge was built, but they were there before I got here. So we're going to buy 10 new poles. Uh, that'll be eight to replace uh, with two spares. That way we'll have two sitting around in case somebody hits one. Um, install the conduit, pull the wire, connect them up. It is a 12-week lead time on these poles, and uh, we're asking for $76,115.25. I'll take any questions y'all may have. This is the best news we've had in the three years I've been doing this. I'm hearing about those lights. Replace all the lights themselves? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll replace the lights with our standard roadway light, with our standard roadway LED. That's not included in this. No, but most of them have been replaced that already, 90% of them. Um, and that's just... Now those are 100 bucks a piece, 120 bucks. A piece. I think there's about 10 of them that need, need, that need to be changed that aren't on. We haven't changed them because there's no power there. Right. So, okay. There will point. be there will be a little change, and, and, and Logan and I are still don't have any input from the DOT. At some point, they're going to change that exit coming from Athens onto 11, but that's not clear what they're going to do there. So we're just going to put the lights back where they were, and when they come to fix the roadway, we'll just move them. We'll put the pipe as far back as we can on the edge of the right of way. Yeah, we don't have a timeline on that yet. There's just no timeline on what that change is. I know y'all are ex excited about getting this fixed, and I know there's a 12-week lead time on these on these poles and lights, uh, or poles and arms. I have a motion by Mr. Larry Bradley for approval. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Gregory. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed, like sign. <clears throat> Motion carries. That passes. Mayor, you, you mentioned the downtown lights. Yes, sir. Uh, we have one bid on those already. We're waiting on the second. Right. And it's a six to eight week lead time on those arms, uh, arms and fixtures. All right. As soon as we get the second, we'll get that, that uh, PO issue and get those on the way. Great. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, looking at, at my report, uh, a couple of things stood out from our last meeting. Uh, we had some question about the cable bills that were uh, charged in advance uh, incorrectly. We have reviewed all of those and not and show that not one single household was billed incorrectly. I just wanted council to know that. Uh, next, uh, we also discussed this decriminalization of marijuana at the last meeting. I do have uh, what I affectionately call my weed committee. Uh, Mr. Garrett, are you still available? Norman is uh, on the committee. Tyler Gregory, I've not asked formally, but right now I am. Uh, David Dickinson, if you would please serve as well, that would be great. Um, Chief Watts will be gathering the information from other jurisdictions. Probably will have you get together for the first time in May. Um, did I hear Norman come back on? I'm on. Okay. Uh, Norman, I'd appreciate if you'd serve on this uh, decriminalization of marijuana committee. Uh, you'll meet, meet for the first time in May. Um, moving to COVID update, very, very quick. Our, our numbers are still down. Uh, nationwide, they have taken a tick up over the last week. So uh, please uh, be careful. I did not get a chance to talk to Larry today. So I don't have exact numbers, but I do know that we uh, have plenty of room that we hope to not use uh, in our ICU at the hospital. 
I don't think we have anybody on vents uh, at this particular moment. Um, two more things. The, the Texas power grid last week uh, with, with the storm that hit Dallas uh, put them basically out of business. Um, some of them had, with, with ERCOT uh, running the show out there, had uh, $20,000 bills uh, for the month. Uh, it's a pay-as-you-go type uh, type issue that that they have avoided uh, any real long-term maintenance for, for these type of emergency situations. Uh, Jim Fuller sent out a um, an explanation for us, and and I and I'm quite sure you've all heard uh, had questions by your constituents. Are we ready? And and the good news about uh, MEAG is we are absolutely ready. Um, our, Texas does not have connectivity to neighboring states, uh, and, and we do. And the two parts that are good for us is one, it provides an economic opportunity, uh, and, and that happened last uh, last summer. Uh, Florida Power and Light had uh, one of their one of their major uh, energy producers go down, uh, and, and we got to, s to sell to them on a 24-hour immediate turn, and, and it, the system works well for us. Uh, next, our energy portfolio, I don't know if you've ever gotten to go to the Electric Authority in Jacksonville, but we are uh, nuclear, we're solar, we're gas, wind, uh, hydroelectric, um, coal, and natural gas. So we have a really good mix. And, and people also ask you, and, and I try to make a point of this, we're 70% non-carbon emitting. Uh, so feel real good about the way our product mix is. And, and when you get, get the chance to go to a MEAG meeting, whether it's this summer or, or next, uh, I really urge you to take the MEAG 101. It's, it's the most impressive thing that I think we get to take a part of uh, in providing power for our citizenry. Um, last thing, uh, Danny mentioned that we have the Great American Cleanup in April from the 19th through the 23rd. Danny, I don't know if typically you keep the station open on that Saturday if we do a pickup, or do we, we do a cleanup? Um, we can make it later. Okay, that'd be great, because we have scheduled community cleanup day for 9 a.m. on April 24th. I hope you'll get all of your churches involved, uh, all of your youth groups. Um, I have talked to sheriff's office, and we'll have uh, some of uh, their tenants uh, who will be helping out doing some cleanup as well on that day. So um, that being said, I think we are ready to adjourn to an executive session. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. A motion by Mr. Ross Bradley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. We'll adjourn to executive session.